you have to keep swinging. It's all falling on the floor. <laughs> it's finally found one, but it's a D string. It's no good. The next one is a G string. That's no good. So. Sacerdote i vostri cenne attende. I was very, very fortunate to be able to be associated with the film Schindler's List when it came to the musical part of it. I remember John Williams called me and said to me, it's like I hear a violin, and uh, would you do it? And I said, wonderful. And I was uh, very happy I did, and uh, we'd like to play for you today the uh, theme from Schindler's List by John Williams.
Each of us has our own favorite Live from Lincoln Center program. And when we asked our viewers all over the country which broadcast they'd most like to see tonight, they chose Stephen Sondheim's bittersweet musical, A Little Night Music. I always thought the title of his song from that show, Send in the Clowns, was an esoteric old circus term. The night of the broadcast, the intermission brought us Stephen himself so he could explain why he used that term. Uh, I never thought it would be in any way esoteric. Uh, I wanted to use theatrical um, imagery in the song because she's an actress. But it's not supposed to be circus. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to have that circus reference, but it's a theater reference, meaning if the show isn't going, well, let's send in the cloud, in other words, let's do the jokes. I always uh, want to know when I'm writing a song what the end is going to be. So, Send the Clowns didn't settle in until I got the notion of don't bother, they're here. Which means that we are the fools. And um, that's the story. I wish I had more to say to you about it. I wrote it in E major, what else do you want to know? <laughs> well, of course, there, there is your wife, but I, I thought perhaps just perhaps you might be in need of rescue too from renewing my unrenewable youth it was just a thought when my eyes are open and I look at you I see a woman that I have loved for a long time who entranced me all over again when I came to her rooms, who gives me such genuine pleasure that in spite of myself, I came here for the sheer delight of being with her again. The woman who could rescue me. Of course. But when my eyes are not open, which is most of the time, all I see is a girl in a pink dress, teasing a canary, running through a sunlit garden to hug me at the gate, as if I'd come home from Timbuktu instead of the municipal courthouse three blocks away. Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground, you Send in the clouds Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? One who keeps tearing around One who can't Oh, 
Desiree. I'm sorry. I never should have come. <laughs> to flirt with rescue when one has no intention of being saved. Do try to forgive me. Performers and audiences feel an even closer bond when they come together in support of a common purpose. After the terrible damage of Hurricane Katrina, we at Jazz at Lincoln Center wanted to do what we could for my hometown. So many musicians stepped forward to help the Crescent City. We had a feast of blues, grooves, and goodwill. A lot of donated dollars. By carrying it live from Lincoln Center, the whole country got to be there with us and for the people of New Orleans. We started off the big night stepping and chanting as befits the New Orleans neighborhood tradition. Hey, no! Hey, no! Y'all don't believe it? Hey, no! Hey, no! Come on, homie! Hey, no! Dark days after 9-11, the conductor of the New York Philharmonic, Kurt Mazur, chose the healing powers of the Brahms Requiem 
to dedicate this performance in the most unusual and generous way a performer can, he asked the audience not to applaud at the end. To make out of their silence the city's common prayer. Now, birthdays are happier occasions, even when it's your 200th. The night of Rossini's 200th birthday, a spectacular array of Rossini specialists joined in singing one of the great finales of all time. Oh! 
I grew up watching live from Lincoln Center at home in Bloomington, Indiana. I saw so many amazing performances as a kid, so it was quite a thrill for me to be asked to perform on the show myself. For me, there's something special about performing at the penthouse, a small room on top of Lincoln Center's Rose Building, with a view of the city right out of a Fred Astaire movie. I just love the casual atmosphere, and I particularly like not having to wear a tie. Um, there are some really, really great tunes about, and one of them was written by this Irish guy, Mr. Traditional. <laughs> and there's an awful lot of other guys who wish they had written it too. <laughs> it is, of course, Danny Boy. And this is one of my very favorite tunes because it's sort of like a prayer in music. And uh, while I play it, I'm often very thankful to all the people who've helped me along the way. And it just brings to mind all the good things that have happened to a little guy from Belfast. And uh, I'd like to play it for you right now. And if you feel like praying about anything, go ahead, because you won't get the sort of band like this in church, I can tell you that. <laughs>
Ballet was built into Lincoln Center from the very beginning. The New York State Theater was designed for George Balanchine and the New York City Ballet by the great architect Philip Johnson. And when the series live from Lincoln Center began, its third telecast ever was dance. The American Ballet Theater's Swan Lake with Natalia Makarova, followed a year later by Giselle with Mikhail Boryshnikov. You have to be thoughtful about putting together a program, and you certainly want to close the first act on a high point. At the end of this act, and before our little intermission, we decided to offer up a series of high points, and we had 30 years of high points to choose from.
And these lousy peanuts they give me to hand out here, I mean, how much would it cost them, huh? A couple of bowls of crudite, maybe a cheddar ball. Party mix! Trying to quit?
quando, quando li guarda e scotto sforzando i denti di varsa e sempre... <ride> I'm sure Danny Kay's Irish somewhere back there, perhaps a touch of County Cork. After a short station break, it's only one minute, so hurry up at the fridge and we'll be back with more treasures from Live from Lincoln Centre. Welcome back to the second half of this 30th anniversary of Live from Lincoln Centre. Usually an intermission is longer than that, and the show has a chance to bring you something extra. This series makes a big effort to pull you up close to a piece of music, People who don't know, but who want to know, get a chance during intermission to become intrigued by the story of the piece they will soon be hearing. I think it was a part of the strength of this music it comes from kind of homesickness. He came here a number of times for a couple of years, and he sometimes left children behind. He loved his house. He loved his home. He loved Bohemia. When he was a young man, he wrote a group of songs called the Cypresses, which uh, was Dvorak's sister-in-law, someone he loved very, very deeply. It was her favorite song. After he finishes the concerto with, with a, a brisk allegro to close, she dies. He changed the whole ending of the last movement. And in the very last thing that he writes, like I would say maybe 40 seconds before the end, uh, the cello plays uh, with the solo violin, the concertmaster plays this theme. <laughs> most haunting and beautiful reminiscence of this tune which he'd written in 1865 for the beautiful young Josefina Chermakova. In the manuscript, apparently, he wrote, for those that know me, they would understand. And for those that don't, it doesn't matter.
The public rarely got to see George Balancing. He felt his ballets belonged on stage, not him. So it was a rare occasion when he came out in front of the curtain and talked to the audience. To celebrate the 100th birthday of Igor Stravinsky, Balancing and Lincoln Kirstein came out to salute their absent friend, Russian style. wants to say a few words. George wants to say a small world. And the small world, he says, is that Pierre Monteux, who did the first big production of the Sac de Printemps in honor of Mr. Stravinsky, sent a singing telegram. And he said, Happy birthday to you. Yes, happy birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to drink. Oh, I want to, I want to say something he forgot to say. That at the end of the performance, we will have a table set for everybody. As you go out, you can have a hooker. <laughs> My own first appearance on Live from Lincoln Center was in Balanchine's legendary ballet, Apollo. 
Balancing told me the story when he met the critics in Paris after the premiere of Apollo, that they were all outraged that he had Apollo on, on his knees. And how could you do this with the great God, Apollo on his knees? And Balancing said, well, dear, when did you ever see Apollo?
When I first came to New York to be an actor, I studied at the Juilliard Drama School, which is um, just over there. And over the years, I've acted in numerous plays at the Lincoln Center Theater, which is, if I've got my bearings right, just over there. So uh, Lincoln Center has always been a kind of cultural home for me. But it's also been a kind of cultural kitchen, if you will, of sorts, uh, where performing artists from different disciplines can partake of one another's offerings and thereby nourish more fully their own crafts. So on behalf of the theater arm of Lincoln Center, I want to say thank you to Mr. Balanchine, Balanchine Bernstein, Bernstein, <laughs> Mr. B, sorry, wherever you are, uh, you have raised the bar, not just the ballet bar, for all of us. You have inspired us and your legacy, what you have created, will live on forever. If I may quote Shakespeare coming, <clears throat> as I do from the theater, just over there. <laughs> so long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Happy birthday. Thank you.
ci daremo la mano, la mi dirai di sì, e di non è lontano, partiamo ben mio da qui. Vorrei, non vorrei, mi tengo un po' qui. Something I know from my own experience is that one of the most precious ways of learning come from absorbing the secrets of a master, like holding wisdom in your hands. So when a special occasion for them comes around, like a birthday or anniversary, we want to be there. Like the night Leonard Bernstein came here to celebrate the 85th birthday of one of his great mentors, Aaron Copeland. He opened the evening with Copeland's Fanfare for the common man.
When Isaac Stern turned 60, there was also a birthday concert at Lincoln Center. The big chocolate cake duet for violinists is Bach's double violin concerto, which I came to play alongside him. I hardly imagined that in my lifetime, or the life of this series, I would return years later and play the same piece with my students alongside me. Night is nearly over. It's the time in every show when you want to pull out all the stops, try to bring the audience to their feet, and send them home happy, dancing all the way. After 30 years of live from Lincoln Center endings, here are some of the ones that we think will leave you the happiest.
subject y'all to my singing but this is gonna be one of those nights we're gonna start off with a new orleans classic entitled saint james infirmary saint james infirmary St. James Infirmary I saw my baby there When she was stretched out on a long white table So sweet, so cold, so fair Let her go, let her go, God bless her Wherever she may be But she could search this whole world over She ain't never gonna find a sweet, sweet man like me When I die, I want you to dress me in my straight lace shoes Box back coat and my stepson hat Put a $20 gold piece on my watch chain So the boys will know I died standing past first die to have such words spoken as I've <laughs> heard tonight on such an extraordinary occasion. 
but uh, I was not so disposed. <laughs> I decided to uh, delay anything so drastic in the, on the off chance that it would happen anyway. And um, here, sure enough, my little gamble pay, uh, played off. You know. And uh, it's happened tonight. Um, I wish I could do something appropriate to this occasion. Something um, that uh, would express in some way the, the extent of, uh, of my feeling. I, um, I wish I might uh, wrestle a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or levitate myself before your eyes. <laughs> Climb an invisible ladder or or have someone fire a gun at me and catch the bullet in my teeth. <laughs> but, uh, alas, I have none of those wild talents. Um, I must content myself with saying thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This is Martin Booksbad. 
One of my proudest and most personally rewarding professional assignments has been my role as your commentator for Live from Lincoln Center, beginning with the very first program in January 1976. What a cavalcade of greatness we've enjoyed together during these past 30 years. 30 years, a virtual generation. I've decided that this is an appropriate time for me to pass on the torch to the next generation and I'll pursue other interests and passions. I thank those of you who over the years have written to express your appreciation for my part in Live from Lincoln Center. I'm particularly grateful to the matchless team of professionals with whom it has been a pleasure to collaborate here. Thank you all and good night. Live from Lincoln Center was made possible by a major grant from MetLife, the company that's committed to help you achieve financial freedom. Have you met life today? And with additional support from Thomas H. Lee and Ann Tenenbaum. The Robert Wood Johnson Jr. Charitable Trust, dedicated to enriching the lives of all Americans through medical research, education, and the arts. The Robert and Renee Belfer Family Foundation. The Fan Fox and Leslie R. Samuels Foundation. The Irene Diamond Fund.